Hello everyone and welcome to the Theatre Pitch Podcast. This is Sean. Hello. And this is Joe. Hi. And I'm Jem, and this is the podcast where we take a random online encyclopedia article each week and we each come up with how we would create it and turn it into a theatre show and we pitch that to e- to each other and then at the end of it we smush all of the ideas together and you at home get to vote which one is best or at least which one you'd actually think would be able to be pulled off as a theatre show because nine times out of ten we pitch some really let's say interesting things um so how are you guys today how did you find this article yeah pretty easy yeah i had an idea straight away okay well i didn't understand any of it so joe do you want to try and let the audience understand what we are trying to pitch for well for anyone who hasn't noticed the article title either when they clicked on this podcast episode or in front of them if they're looking at this on youtube um today (laughs) we're doing (laughs) starvation in glaciology In glaciology, starvation occurs when a glacier retreats, not because of temperature increases, but due to precipitation so low that the ice flow downward into the zone of ablation exceeds the replenishment from snowfall. Eventually, the ice will move so far that it either calves into the ocean or melts. When starvation does occur, however, it can almost always be reversed by slight changes in precipitation, such as are brought about by mountain ranges, Thus, even if glaciers do not cover a lowland due to low precipitation, glaciation is almost certain to occur at higher elevations. You know when you have to make a theatre show out of something that you need a degree to understand? That's how I feel. You've got a degree. Yeah, surely all theatre shows, if you've got a theatre degree, do require a degree. Yeah. I don't have the right degree. (laughs) I, I, I just... Oh, okay. So you guys found it easy. So who wants to go first? I want you uh, to go first you, so you don't copy my idea. <laughs> yeah, we, we... You know what, Jem? If you don't really have much, just rip off that bandage, get it out of the way yeah, first. Yeah, go for it. Because it might okay. be good. All right. So forgive me if I um didn't understand what glacial retreat was um because i did find myself googling does that mean that there's less water or more water because the one thing i did understand was that it affects um the drinkable water supply the usable water supply when it comes to animals um so i started to think about this idea of okay it's not about temperature it's about precipitation and how does starvation and droughts but also precipitation work so i kind of went down the artsy route because that's where i found comfort is something i know so this is a show hang on Gemma, you're making an artsy thing yes whoa how new i know hey hey i'll do something maybe i won't do something like new in the future but i've done it's (sighs) I'm cutting that out. I, I, I don't know why I'm so sassy tonight. <laughs> you are so sassy. And you're so sassy. Usually I'm the smart one in the room who like loves science and understands it. Now I'm like, huh? Because you love it? I do love science. Science makes the world go round, literally. Um, so anyway, Sean, <laughs> my idea is um, it's the show is about the story of a family who live in a village and it's kind of in one of those areas where it it could be anywhere but essentially it's a village that is is suffering from drought and um suffering from essentially the starvation of water but when we open the show um I i want it to also be quite an experience for the audience so i want to use projection mapping the floor of the stage is um covered in water right? It is literally covered in water. I kind of want the audience to be in that water too. I kind of want them to be stood in the water as well. Um, And it's only just a little bit, you know, only a couple of inches of water so that wellies wellies will be there uh, and, and be fine with that. But we're stood in water and we've got projection mapping around us that is of 
rain. So we kind of, everything is telling us that we're being rained on. And as we open the show, um, we discover this family that live in this incredibly lush, um, water rich environment. Everything is fantastic. There's actually an overabundance of water. Um, there are slight messages within the show um of how you know the overabundance is quite bad we are there you know it's it's pointing towards this idea of uh, uh, of global climate change um and how that can be a bad thing and also those ideas that too much of one thing is not always a good thing uh but this is a a, a water full land everybody doesn't care because it's great right and we have a character who keeps coming to this family and, tell, and tells them, you know, turn off um, your, your water when you're brushing your teeth and try and conserve the water. And everybody's like, well, it, it's an abundant source, right? It's that, it's that mentality that a lot of uh, people who come from privileged, water-rich environments have, where it's like, well, we'll always have water. We just turn on the tap. And then... We, the rain and the projection mapping changes. Um, and I couldn't decide whether I wanted to play with the idea of acid rain and actually putrefying the water, or mainly with um, what I did learn from the article of starvation, is that you have an overabundance of water whilst the glaciers are melting and retreating, but then because they retreat and actually melt, they, it leads inevitably to a drought and leads to a lack of water supply. So the arc of this story, and it's reflected within the projection mapping, it's also reflected in, I want to, by the end of the show, have drained the water from the space and it, like that, 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 that we're stood in as well. Uh, but I want it to be done really slowly so you don't realize it. And the arc is that we go from this water rich environment where with the real subtext messaging of y'all should pay attention it's all right now but ev all of the science is saying well, it's gonna go wrong and eventually end up playing with this idea of actually the realism of what having living in a drought is going from you know the hose pan the hose um pipe bands that i grew up in africa uh where there were droughts all the time so i remember those kinds of things and the the, the, the conservation of water is still really instilled in me but how we go from that to actually a land that is starting to die because it doesn't have the water to su to sustain it. And I was thinking, you know, wh whether there was either a technology or whether there was a way that we could take plants and kill them, like, dr dr like drain them and drought them, I don't know, um, or what whatever, in order to like properly just create this environment that very slowly without you noticing unless you decide to notice you can blink and like be wrapped up in this family drama that you're watching and not realize that oh actually now i feel like the air is dry and i feel it and I, it, it, it's hot and i don't like it and everything like there's no water but then if you are the person listening to that one figurehead in the show who's sitting there sounding the alarms you know hopefully that person is also played by leonardo dicaprio but um <laughs> if you're listening to the leo of the show then you'll notice that slow progression but i really want that environment to impact on the audience so that's my show my favorite bit is that the guy comes in and he's like the earth's dying when you brush your teeth just be a bit more like you know just just turn the tap off for a bit and then turn it back on that's my favorite bit he's like every little helps it is. It's true. Is this show sponsored by Tesco? <laughs> <laughs> and I love, I love that the main characters are like, "Be gone, Leo! I will brush my teeth, however which way I want. <laughs> I'll have water fights every hour of every day. Whilst brushing my teeth, what's he gonna do? Exactly. Yeah, Jeb. That's. That, I won't lie to you. That's the exact sort of thing I'd expect from you. Yeah. Bit I'm... preachy. So, um... Bit like story driven. Yep. Throw, so, some, Jim, throw some water I, in there. I do have to ask one question. Yeah. Which is that this sort of kind of like... I, I finally understand the point that you're trying to make with it. And I think 
that it's a very valid point to make. But much like I'm assuming the Leo DiCaprio of it all was because of the film Don't Look Up. And also his, um, you know, general environmental um, activism. Yeah. He yeah, gets around the earth telling it's people... It's mainly about, like, it. water creatures, I know, but he, he has touched on pretty much every kind of, like, well, listen to the climate change yeah. people, right? But mostly my question is, how do you think you can do this in a way that actively reaches out to people who haven't already absorbed the message of it because i think the problem with a lot of things that have a kind of climate change based narrative is they often essentially do a lot of preaching to the choir and don't really have a way to appeal to climate change skeptics because the show it, on the show that you will watch has got nothing to do with climate change it's everything to do with a family drama so, I mean, I, I haven't really paid attention to that because I'm like, at this point, because we were given this on a short, and, a short period of time and what that family drama is, ultimately, I don't care. But it is this arc of this family who go from abundance to, to having nothing. And some people can sit there and go, well, maybe this is a socioeconomic story um, and read those undertones out of it as well, which it can have those flavorings and those metaphors within it as well. But ultimately, when you're talking about like, uh, how do I get people? So the marketing copy would be, you know, follow Jim B, follow Jim and his family. Wait, did you as... say Jim Beam? I was going to say Jim the Beam. Jim Beam Bourbon Company. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Um, but it would be like, follow the, the family through as they discover, I don't know, this and that. And it's like, the. The messaging with the environment, the messaging with anything else that you can take it out, out of that is subtext. It is it, it is it is very much proxy to it. And the you know, the appeal of this show is that it is also an installation. And I found myself kind of sitting there going, Well, because all I could think of was installations and exhibitions and things like that. And I had to Google what is theatre? Um to find out where my boundaries were. And that really got me thinking about, well, how do you put live performance into this and the story? <laughs> and I like the idea that, you know, it is also, it is kind of in that don't look up way of like that messaging that we are so distracted by everything else that we aren't paying attention to the thing that matters. But ultimately it's not, it's not discussing those themes. It is maybe got something right at the end where you look around and you look at this burnt out dry wasteland but the story is you know it could be uh void check for all i care you know when you googled what is theater yeah. did you manage to put in the whole sentence or did google sort of go this is recent results because <laughs> no. i feel like that's being asked quite a lot on this i think it's been a... <laughs> were all the links purple um, I, I I think we've asked it a lot, but I've never actually Googled it until now where I was like, I need, I'm, I'm infringing on what is theatre. Um, though I, I do have to say, I, I, I was doing a lot of this Googling whilst sat on a bus and there was an old man looking over my shoulder sat next to me and I could see the like, I'm sitting there Googling like climate change museums and Arctic museums and then what is theatre and then glaciology and then acid rain and then projection mapping. And it's like you could see him being like, what is the thought track here? How does this all lead to a coherent logic? Yeah, but be honest, any time old men come near, you just Google acid rain to try and throw them off the scent. Yeah, <laughs> I'm quite uncomfortable about how close this man is next to you in this story. Yeah, also, was he wearing close. a mask? Uh, he was wearing a mask. He also did, towards the end of the journey, fall asleep, and he was of the age. And... So he was bored of what you were doing. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he, was, he was bored, and then I and then I regretted everything, because in, in his sleep, he... Um, and I'm sure he's lovely and would be mortified if he ever identified himself from this very loose and anonymous story. But in his sleep, sat next to me on the bus, he was farting deadly things into the environment, so... I got off the bus early. So <laughs> what is... you're saying is the best thing we can do for climate change is find and kill this old man. 
I wow, mean, Jim, really weird stance to take. Yeah. Just so long as we do it with... That's not per- theatre. Just so long as we do it with projection <laughs> mapping and we've got wet feet. Right, should we move on from yeah. the old man? Joe, what's sure. yours? Um, I, I'm glad to know that we're now just going to stick to this is the running order this season. Jem, okay, then me, then Sean. Sean. No, no, I, I can go next. It's fine. Um, Best till last. So, uh, are both of you aware of the band Death Cab for Cutie? Yes. No. Fair enough. Great. Um, Sean, have you ever heard the song I'll Follow You Into the Dark? You'll have to sing it for me. Um, I I will, but bear in mind we might not have the copyright on this, so... This bit may need to be cut out. I'm willing to take the risk. Fair enough. Just a bit off key. If heaven and hell decides that they both are satisfied, illuminate the nose on this vacancy sign. There's no one beside you when your soul embarks. I'll follow you into the dark. No, I don't know that. Fair enough. Anyway, they also had a song called The Ice Was Getting Thinner that essentially takes this metaphor of the melting polar ice caps and applies it as a metaphor to this um, crumbling relationship where neither person really noticed the relationship falling apart, but Mm -hmm. that when it was too late, they realized how thin the ice had got beneath them, essentially. And uh, I was uh, thinking about this, using this, and I kind of want to take the idea of... um, exploring both the previous occurrences of starvation um, and applying them to looking at both the current rate of global warming and the likelihood of starvation to reoccur, but also applying it to this idea of the two main characters in my play are a pair of climate scientists who... um, are getting so buried down to their work that they um, are slowly falling out of love with one another and not really noticing. And how the starvation becomes a metaphor for the ways that um, their own relationship is sinking and melting. Um, And, yeah, it's basically uh, taking inspiration from, you know, Pinter's Betrayal. Which I say because it's the only play I can think of about breakups. Um, Did I Sean, resolve... do you have a more applicable theatre reference to go? Um, a a theatre show where there's a where there's a breakup. Yeah, where it's where all about a falling a part of a relationship. Um, Out of hell. What's what what's that one that got turned into a Jude Law film? Um, Closer. Closer. That did I break? Oh yeah, yeah. That's... There's a break up there, isn't there? Yeah, there we go. It's it's kind of like um, uh, a a climate history closer. Um, um, and you carry on explaining it's all your take metaphor. Place at the think. Eden Project. Ooh. Um, because who doesn't love the Eden Project? It's a fun venue. Um, and yeah, it's. Going to just be a standard, going back to, to what I know and love, front on theatre. Um, and just a good kind of piece about using the article as a metaphor for a broken relationship. I've got another one. Oh, yeah? There's plenty of uncoupling in Starlight Express. <laughs> John! You're on about the uncoupling of the... Uh, the the carriages from the engines, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like it, Joe. I like. I like. Did I get? Did I? Did I stay broken up at the end? Um, is it a sad it's, ending? Or is it... It's one of these endings where it's left kind of open ended in the same way that um, obviously the story of will more starvation happen to the ice sheets is open ended in itself in that there is the hope that they could do something to get back together, but it's not known if they will know what to do and do it. So how uh, do you have undertones or is this like, I'm going to pose your question right back at you that you had for me, which is 
a are there the undertones of like climate change rhetoric and um how you uh, know, this is the opposite this is oh. not using a family to kind of tell a story of which climate change is the subtext this is using climate change as a metaphor to talk about love okay and the demise of it therein um it's okay (laughs) this is different because this is entirely marketed at the sort of person who would go and see something where it's like oh i hear this plays supposedly about climate change but really it's about a crumbling relationship we we aren't bothered about trying to convince any climate skeptics um we just want to put on a show in the eden project where who what climate skeptics are going to the eden project fair enough Okay. Legally Blonde, the musical, starts quite early on with a breakup. Yeah. I thought you were about to say Legally Blonde, the musical, is starting at the Eden Project soon. <laughs> I would see that, though. Legally Blonde, the musical, tour to the Eden Project. I will go every night. It, it's opening, the, you know, the open-air theatre in London. It's actually opening yeah. their season this, this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that sounds fantastic. I know. Um, anyone watching this who hasn't decided what to do for their summer, go and watch that. Um, so Sean, yes. what is your pitch? Okay, so my pitch is based on the first sentence in the article. Which is so, Joe? Um it is oh, do you want me to reread it? Or not Sean, e- not even it? not even the first sentence, like oh. the first hyperlink. Okay, which is uh, Glacier Retreats. Okay. Movement. Backwards. Oh, I thought you were going to say the other, the first hyperlink for other uses see starvation disambiguation. No, no. <laughs> if we're going that literal, the first <laughs> hyperlink is main page. That's so, a fair point. Glacier retreats, movement Gemma backwards. That's what mine's all about. Okay. <laughs> so it is. So it's a movement. So I was going to base it all on movement and stuff retreating. So. It is a water piece, thrust staging. Yep, so the audience are on three of the four sides. It's being lit from above, and the whole, like, thrust staging is lit. So it's a long, long rectangle, lots of space, lots of space. That's where my water is, yep. And it is, because you know, because you know it's the best way to address climate change through contemporary dance. It is a contemporary dance piece. Of course it is. It is a contemporary I, dance water piece. I wish I'd written it down right at the beginning. My guess as soon as I saw this article was <laughs> Sean's going to do something about using the fact that there's movement to portray yes. literal movement through water ballet. Yes. So... Contemporary dance, not ballet. Sorry, water contemporary different. dance. So the the reason why I'm doing that, the the sort of like constraint that I'm putting on the act, put it on the actors, sorry, on the dancers, is that as the performance goes on, the lighting that is above them, like in the whole stage, retreats. Okay. And as it goes on, the movement that they re- create is losing more and more space to do it until the end. Where there's no space. Okay. And that's the end. I like the concept a lot. Mine's, I, ha- it's, I haven't got... Sorry, I haven't got a story. I haven't got a breakup. I haven't got narrative. It's movement. That's fine. I do have one question, though. Yes. You said, this is a water piece. Yeah. The hell does that mean? Oh, there's... What do you mean? I... Like, like, what? Like, you've said it's thrust stage. It's a, you said it's a water piece. It's thrust staging. It's lit from above and it's contemporary dance, right? Thrust staging, lit from above, contemporary dance. Totally get. Like, is the water on a on a on a no, wall the water, or is sorry, it on the floor? Sorry. Like, the water, what, like yeah, is it the raining? Water's on the floor. The water's on the floor. It's gonna be like a couple of couple of inches high, and that's also gonna you know affect their movement and they create you know. I have to say, Sean. I've seen this piece already. As with 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 the retreating light. 
not with the retreating lights. That's the important but a non, bit. But a non that's, sensi- that comes, that's the that's the bit that create you know shows the glacier retreating. But a, but a, a a contemporary dance piece in a big tray of water yeah, is called Gemma, Boys. We saw it. Yeah, at, I've at seen I've seen many shows that's contemporary dance piece in water. That's yeah, that I, that's a thing, Gemma. But my yeah, thing is that Gem. with the light. That's my concept. Yeah, I saw the Taiwanese water ballet perform at the Rep in Birmingham. This isn't a new thing, water. No, the Sean's I... thing is the lighting, not the water. The lighting, it's all added I've... together. The lighting is the concept, Gemma. <laughs> I mean, I've also The lighting seen... is I, the I concept, have... Gemma. I have seen that be done with light before. I just haven't seen it be put together, which I'll give you that as a credit. Well, of course you've seen it be done with light, otherwise you wouldn't have seen it. Yeah. I mean, no, Sean's I just... concept isn't lighting, Gemma. <laughs> it's lighting retreating. <laughs> Sean's Gem- not trying to claim he's the first person to light theatre. <laughs> well, he has tried that before. <laughs> no, I haven't. I just, I've just perfected it. <laughs> <laughs> by and my and when I say perfected, I mean you know what? I'm just going to backlight this bit. <laughs> Don't that look nice? <laughs> Um, okay, so, Joe, do you have any questions for Sean before I start, like, trying to prove that my story, especially, you know, my show where I didn't understand the article fully, is still the best? Um, before you do, Sean, can I just clarify, so the lighting is the concept? The lighting is the main concept, really, because okay. as it... As as I the really lighting like goes that. on, it gives it gives your performers less space to dance in. And that you know, and how how does that affect how does that affect them? And it's basically a massive metaphor for climate change. Right. Well, you know what? The ice caps are melting. These things are happening right now. So, Gem, uh, let's not waste these people's times when they could be out campaigning for uh, climate um, yeah. policies. Just uh, say what you got to say, but say it quickly. Let's cut to the smush then. These people have got to glue themselves to motorways. We ain't got do- <laughs> time to fall about where we're talking about Starlight Express. I know. Go to- things. We've got to go and grow some more concrete. I mean, I, 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 I What get a reference. That. What a pull, Joe. Well done. I still love that video. <laughs> <laughs> that geezer's face was like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing in my life? Um... Uh, to, to stop us being upstaged by a meme, let's cut to the smush. Uh, so this is a part of the podcast where we take all three ideas and we attempt to smush them up in a collaborative way to pr- present you, our fine listeners and watchers, if you're watching us on YouTube, with a fourth option. We're going to try and outdo ourselves. So has anybody got any idea of how we smush these ideas together? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah? Um. So, when we cut cut it down to it, of like, Sean's idea is telling story through movement, through use of like kind of wet staging, and through the retreating of lights. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad someone got it. Yeah, and Gem, I got no, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I know you're being facetious right now, but Sean, I got it. I got it, and I know. I don't think I know, you got it, Jeff. The lighting was the concept. I know that it's going to be gorgeous, and I know that because I've seen it before. That's just my. <laughs> that was just my point. <laughs> you gave me sass earlier, and now the theatre makers here. I love the idea. Yeah, I, mean, I know we're here, work but also, Jeff, because... could you let me finish speaking? Oh. Wow. Well, a, I'm assuming we're about me as the theatre maker, yeah? So much yeah. sass today yeah. in this episode. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm assuming I'm the theatre maker, yeah? The what? The one person here without a theatre degree. Don't need a degree to make theatre, Jem. Yeah, Jem, you just said you didn't have the right degree. <laughs> the right degree to understand an, an article about glaciology. Right. I studied drama. So... My thinking is, my way of doing this smush is essentially taking kind of 
the narrative conceits of mine and Jem's pieces, mm -hmm. but applying them using the kind of elements of all three staging things. So, obviously, it's in the Eden Project. We use the retreating lighting to show the crumbling of the family slash relationship. And also, we have the water slowly flooding out of the stage while these tales are told through movement. Yes. Through dance. Through Done. not words. That so 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 we have a contemporary dance piece about a crumbling relationship that mirrors and is a metaphor for the crumbling environment and the drought filled environment that surrounds them and the audience. That yeah. is our fourth pitch. Yeah. So it's and yeah, we have it so that the lighting is slowly retreating at the same time as the I was thinking Sean, would you allow for if we had it kind of performed in something of like a, a tank of water for there to also be underfloor lighting just so that it kind of like um, builds that well not fully a tank but you know like just so that as the water is retreating we can kind of see like that they almost begins with this almost like primordial glow as these LEDs shone through the water but yeah, then as, as it as, goes on there's like basically treat. no light whatsoever as long really as them lights retreat, I really the light like retreats. the idea. I really like the idea that the moment we realize the floor is dry is the moment they realize that it's done. Like they yeah. don't have a relationship anymore. And like that, that idea of like hitting solid ground, that idea of being suddenly awoken by, you know, you're out the dream and you're, you're just there. That yeah. I, I can feel the emotional power of that moment. Also, Plus, it will be I've, so. Um, oh, I've, sorry, Joe. Oh, sorry. Just going to say, I've decided now, no more open ending. The ending is now that, as in love, as in climate disasters, um, by the time we've realised what we need to do to stop it, it's too late already. So the, a perfect the light's touch already of Leo gone off. <laughs> Don't look up. Yeah, and it's uh, starring Leo DiCaprio and Michelle Williams just to hark back to the classic film Shutter Island. No! Everyone remembers Shutter Island, right? No! No. I, I, Sean, what were you going to say? I don't like that casting. No, no. I was just going to say, like, at the end, because, like, the light has, like, almost gone out and they're so confined to the small space, that could be, like, oh... Yeah. I'm so like, oh, what's love? Oh, I, I can't yeah. move to express myself. And then the lights go out. And then you all realise like, oh, love, hey. It's not worth it. That's a Let's wonderful... Let's recycle. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a wonderful cheery note to end. To end yeah. on. And, and if you like them cheery notes, why don't you follow us on all the social media stuff <laughs> by going to linktree forward slash OFITD and there you'll find our website, you'll find our YouTube channel, you'll find our Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. You know, if you like this, if you like this witty banter about <laughs> terrible climate change, why don't you uh, like, share and subscribe? And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I forgot about that. I forgot that's me as well. You've, you you've, also, you've also, Joe, 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 while Sean's doing this, look up the next Yeah, article. while Sean's doing this, yeah. I'm going to hit up the randomizer on the online encyclopedia. The randomizer. I just, I just, I was, I just get so inspired. I wanted to segue places. You so, so did. I like that. And you know what? It's good that you're doing that because segways are a more environmentally friendly form of transport. I really wish, I really wish you'd said segways is our next Wikipedia article. <laughs> so you can follow me on Instagram. It's still Shawnee B. You know, last week I said like, oh, I'm off Twitter because it's just full of bad news. Yeah. I realised the one time I use Twitter positively is on transfer deadline day. And I was like, oh, what do I, oh, what do? I, do? I, I was so lost. I had to like keep so, te texting people. I was like, "Has anyone signed anyone?" But anyway, if you want to follow Joe on Instagram or Twitter, Joe, where can people do that? You can do so at Not Joe Rancia. That's N O T J O E R A C Z K A. And Gemma, and you oh. can find me there on Twitter and Instagram. But if you want to talk about the African Cup of Nations, talk to Sean. It's fun. 
It's been an odd one, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> hey, Gem, where can Hi. people follow you on Instagram and Twitter? On Instagram, you can get me at OFITD underscore J-E-M for Gem. And um, on Twitter, I don't tweet a lot, I'll be honest. I have it there as a, like, everything is automated, like, just reposting stuff. But you can get me at Gem Ralston. Yeah. So do you want me to uh, let you know what next week's article is? Yes. Shall we? Shall we do a drum roll? Um, I mean, you can if you want to, but I don't know whether Sean's going to be happy with you as the uh, Gem, just person do, who has just to do, the audio. Jem, just do what you want to do. So, no, oh, that's giving me too much too much pressure. Joe, what's the article? Next week's article is John Shabir. What? I don't think I need to tell you anymore. Obviously, you know John Shabir, Obviously. the um, of course. 18th century British Tory political satirist. Okay. So, so, so we're hopping from one sliding scale of the shit I don't understand to the other. <laughs> you know what a Tory is. <laughs> I, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Though, let's not forget, this is an 18th century Tory, which means it's a different thing altogether. Yay, the 1700s! Hooray! Okay, well, thank you guys for the pictures, and I, I don't know what we're going to do for the next episode, but... If you've enjoyed this episode, you should probably enjoy the next one. If you haven't enjoyed this episode, give the next one a go, because maybe you'll enjoy that. Um, but thank you for listening or watching on YouTube. And um, I still don't know how to end this podcast. So bye. Bye.